Welcome to the weekly development update for patrons of Sketchy Tactics. We're doing this in a single take, so apologies for errors and retreads, but it was a long day, got a lot of stuff done, and too tired to do video editing, which is not my strong suit, so we're just going to run it all the way through. I did make a handy list of notes, however, so I can talk through all of the changes. There is a very large list. All right, let's get into the game here. We're playing with our level three mathematician now. So the first thing you'll notice here is that we have some basic artwork and scenery for the starter region. We have a little arrow pointing this direction made out of stones. We've got some sand spots for a little bit of texture. We've got some cacti, some animal bones, and the inkwell, which will be important later. Um, so as we walk through the different zones here, you'll see some, some different content. A um, couple things to note here before we move on. The uh, region, which we'll see here in a little bit, is surrounded by a series of impassable maps. We're going to add a heat wave effect, but for now, when you enter them, they look exciting. But after a while, you close from the heat and return. Those are impassable until you complete the next quest, which I'm working on, which I'll show how you get to that quest in a little bit. And that quest uh, is basically part of the sort of intro to the game sequence that allows you to leave the starter region, which itself is quite large. This is now um, a 64 map area, which that was quite a grind. So there's 64 maps in this uh, total in the starter region. I'm not going to not going to walk through all of them, obviously. In the beginning here, we're going to follow the arrow as suggested. So the enemies are now being spawned by an enemy spawner. There's actually a spawn table um, that is tied to the region, so we can set different regions for the maps. And they'll have different spawn tables of the currently eight different enemy types. We can actually see what's in a group by hovering them. So this would be a two enemy fight with a tank and a kite. This would be a single tank fight, so you can sort of choose your risk or reward a little bit as you go through. And if you don't like any of those fights, you can find another one. Go up here. Ooh, must be something going on here if there's a big pile of sandbags in this perimeter. Oh, we collapsed from the heat. All right, so we'll do the fight improvements in a little bit. So we're going to follow the, uh, the arrows that were left behind. I sped up the player a little bit, which not only makes testing faster, but the videos as well. We'll eventually have a sort of walking to running transition. Follow the arrows. Notice the previous NPCs were not there. They've been relocated. So we have our first little nomad guard here. And we're going to, oh, can't enter the camp. He's blocking our entrance. What a jerk. Let's talk to him and figure out what's going on. Smell like wet ink fresh out of the well. I don't trust you. One in, prove yourself. Bring me 5x round uncut, round garnet uncut, or die. I don't care. We're feeling confident. Luckily, I cheated, and I have six of them. This was just so you don't have to watch me grind fights for a while. So now that we have this quest assigned, which we can see in our handy quest tracker, and add camp entrance, bring five round garnet uncut to the nomad guard. Smell like wet ink, but behave yourself. So we've completed the nomad camp entrance quest, and now the guard should let us in. So this zone is not decorated yet, but uh, there are a couple NPCs in here. The art is the slowest process for me because I'm not an artist. And I'm trying not to overdo it because eventually this will be real art done by somebody else. But Bob is now here, so we can have our conversations with Bob. And mathematician, I'm going to go ahead and buy the speeder while I'm in here. So the Nomad Camp is a 9x9 nine nine zone. The walls are pretty basic right now. And I don't remember where I put the other guy. So this will have a number of different NPCs, conversations, some different shop types some structures you can go in, etc. Now we can find Weave to get our quest, which we've actually already completed because we're level three. Expand our inventory size and 
switch to the spear. So let's see here. Um, just gonna leave the bandit camp and show some of the ah. Yeah, there's a bug here where sometimes when you enter, it basically spawns you on top of the waypoint and snaps you back. I fixed most instances of that, but not all of them. So now we should be able to come and go as we please. Some of these spawn positions need to be improved. All right. So all these locations have their enemy spawners, and right now they're using the same positions. We're going to randomize them and avoid the scenery. So that looks like a doable fight. But just to show you from the fight perspective, all of these maps have uh, fights that generate off the terrain and use the unwalkable status of the terrain to determine what's passable in the fight. So we're going to go after our kite enemy here. Let's see if we can. Yeah, we won't be able to bait it into electricity this turn. Probably not. Do we get him? No, we didn't get him. All right, so the spear has a two range. All right, so zap him with the electricity. And we can close the distance. Now I can just hunt him down and kill him. While we're here, another improvement. If you want to see the current stats of the enemy, we now have a little hover. So this is Kai 1. See health, initiative, action, and movement, basic stats. And we have a player hover as well, but it is for multiple players, which I'll show in a bit. Poke him, and we'll hit both of us. Ooh. Oh, it's on cooldown for another turn. We'll have to kill him the old-fashioned way. Right. Spear is really good against the kites. Oh, level four. Tend to forget to do this, so. Level up her yellow. So the other thing going on here is um, the enemy spawner, which right now is just local. This is not happening off of the game server. That's kind of a later stage of the development of this is to introduce the remote server, server-side persistence. It's all local right now. These enemies, when you fight and defeat them, they will actually go away, and there'll be a respawn timer um, after which they will come back. So when multiple players are playing, you can farm out maps. Um, an area that is not complete yet is a an oasis, which is a quest zone. And you can tell you're getting closer because there's more stuff growing. Right now, there's that bug again. It's basically empty. So there's, uh, there's a quest related to the impassable heat zone that's going to be added in there. All right, check my list of notes here. Um, so you can now have multiple fights on a map. So if there are two enemies spawned or three or four groups of enemies, you can have that many total fights and the fights are up to three players each multiplayer. Um, and I'll show a little bit of the multiplayer in a bit, although it's basically single player. So I'm just proving it works. Let's see, we did the hovers. Ah, there is a per target limit for some spells per turn. Um, so, uh, let me do this. Um, oop, I just exited the game. That was genius. Let's get back in here. This is real professional stuff here. We are going to make a Geomancer. And we'll have to get our Geomancer to level 1, so I'll talk through some other stuff as we go. Or level 2, I mean. We can acquire the Tangle Root spell. Oop. duke it out with a tank. So the scenery all lines up with the fights, as I said. And this does not block movement because that's passable terrain. These are not passable terrain, and so they block spots. All right, that was a good hit. That was a dirty hit. 
So right now you'll see when we pop out of here, it's going to respawn both enemy groups automatically. And those are nasty, so we're not fighting them. Let's go look elsewhere. Single tank, that's what we want. Ah, we didn't spend our... Yeah, we're level up here as we go away. Another thing I'm not going to show because it just involves leveling up for a while is um, all the character classes now have a level 5 spell. So they get a little bit more complicated. Ooh, a lot of text there. So we're level 2. We got our spell Tangle Grass. We don't have to assign this. It was already assigned for us. This flickers for some reason. I haven't quite figured out yet. But when you get the second spell, you can drag and drop, assign them to hotkeys. You can do multiples here if you want to just stack the bar. So we do have locally persisted hotkey assignment. And now, show you the per turn limit. So before, as long as you had the action points, you could spam the same thing over and over. This applies to players and enemies too. So there's a fun circumstance where the pushers would like headbutt you into an obstruction, and then they would essentially just headbutt you to death because they could do it as many times as they had action points. So now, I've hit that enemy. And I can't do it again because of the target, but I'm totally fine to fire it over there because it's a different target. So there you go. I just cheated out of the fight. So um, so in addition to the cooldown limits, which are turn-based, we have within the same turn limits for some spells so that they're not spammable on the same target, which helps with balance quite a bit. All right, what do we have? We covered the impassable maps. We have 64 maps in the zone. The Oasis area is going to have a different spawn table than the primary area, which is quest-related as well. Build out the Nomad camp, you mentioned the spawn tables, the enemy group hovers, um, and the artwork, and then along the way, of course, a large number of additional bug fixes. So now we're going to go back to the beginning, and I'm going to show you... So we're back on our mathematician character here. Going to go back. Actually, we'll just wait here. Going to drop out, and I'm not going to do this on screen because it gets a little unpleasant to follow all the alt tabbing. But we're coming in on another character who will be joining us shortly. Here's our good friend Geo's. We're going to start a fight here. And during the duration of the countdown, our good friend Geos can join. So this is the one bugged map. The second player spawn location spawns inside impassable terrain, which I need to fix. And our buddy Mass is going to pass the turn. And all this is synced across clients. So we're going to move around here. And Play on multiple players. Do our spear attack. It's going to kite away. We're going to chase him down. I'm Geomancer has the sword. Oh. oh, we didn't equip anything. You know what I did? Because I'm running on a different client. It has a totally different data repository. Look at this. We're getting, getting our butts kicked. So in the meantime... In addition to our enemy hover, as we said. Oh, I seem to have broken the player hover somehow. That's unfortunate. I'll have to demo that next time. There's a player hover, which, oh, I know. It's because of the, yeah. I bet there's one map on which it'll work. I didn't hook it up on all the new fight scenes. I had to do that about 100, I had to repeat that operation 120 some times, so. We missed a few pieces here and there. The punch isn't doing any damage because this enemy's defense is three green is exceptionally strong compared to a level one, which is why you don't want to party up and try to twink players too much. We're gonna kill our friend off here. Yeah. 
didn't equip the weapon, so we can't even harm it. This is some exciting gameplay, huh? Well, you can see the enemy scaling now, and definitely, oh yeah, see? Okay, yeah. Can't see on the, uh, on the other screen, but Geos has nothing equipped, so we're gonna, we're gonna nope out of this fight. Boop. And we're back. All right, I've actually equipped a weapon, but we're just gonna log off on Geos now. So there you can see the multiplayer. It's a uh, full sync state and uh, turn sequences and all that stuff across players. The one thing I did not show is, um, but you'll have to take my word for it, it works. If I start a fight on one character and the other person waits too long to join, the fight is basically locked and they're unable to join. Now they could go do one of the other fights or go to another map, um, but essentially there's a, <clears throat> a countdown limit um, during which other players can join the fight before it locks and begins. And eventually we'll have um, party play where you can lock it to party, can force the start early, all that kind of stuff. But basics for now. So that is your update on um, a weekend and a couple evenings worth of development. Um, the real grind this time was the creation of the the uh, basic art just to punch it up a bit because I'm, I'm terrible at drawing and uh, really the bulk of the work went into uh, uh, although all the addition of like programming and gameplay elements the bulk of the work went into just the the basic layout of the entire start region and setting up the uh, fights in all the locations so that's it for this week um, things are coming along the next Big plans are to start doing the spell icons, add the quest to leave the first region, flesh out the oasis zone, um, and then plan out um, a little bit further content. Um, but the general plan for the most part is to take this starter area and make this the sort of basic version of the game um, and keep building on top of this for now um, without trying to make the world too big. Because among other things, the bigger you make the world, the larger the build time, so it takes forever to um, test it, and that doesn't give a lot of value from like a QA and a game design perspective. A couple other things going on is um, we're going to add line of sight restrictions to some spells, um, so they'll check if there's obstructions between them and the targets. Um, so right now, <clears throat> as long as things are in range um, and the resulting target location is a valid uh, valid fight space. You can, um, you know, shoot. You can shoot arrows through cacti and stuff, which is not what we want to do. Um, there you go. Long weekend. I'm tired. Big update. Huge amounts of content. Hopefully, you can sort of see things fleshing out, improving, getting stronger. Um, and uh, we'll uh, keep beefing it up and check back in a week. Thanks.